Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Walfred, University of Delaware. And my name is Tracy Wooten. I'm the horticultural agent here in uh, Sussex County, Delaware for UD. So we just wanted to say hello. We're yes. going to turn off our camera because it's distracting and we're going to share our screen. And so I'm going to stop my video and we are going to share our screen and officially welcome you to Women in Agriculture's webinar series, Wednesday webinar series. We've been doing this for about four years. My colleague um, Christy Mannering and I tend to do more of the social media technology platform type talks. Tracy has been involved with Women Ag for how long? About seven years. And they do a lot of education. You're in the process right now working with Annie's project. Yes. And let me get this, this into a slideshow. Okay. So we, we do want to thank our sponsors, um, which are all here. So if you do get a chance, we've been doing this for four years and it's made possible by all of these great people and great organizations. We're very proud to uh, partner University of Delaware Extension with our neighboring extension states. And so if you get a chance to um, say thanks to any of these great sponsors, please do so. And uh, you can, all of the webinars now going on four years are archived on their website. So thanks for joining us today. And one thing I'd say as an agent, I'd feel real, I'd feel free to share these with other uh, groups. I know I've shared because they're such a great resource with our Beginning Farmer program. And um, I know we have others in our office today that may not even be in ag, um, but you, in extension and learning uh, about these new technologies as well. So feel free to share. So we're going to talk today about Instagram and our plan is to go through this um, PowerPoint very briefly. You will have it, a uh, PDF of it so that you can consult it. But we wanna spend about half of the time actually going on Instagram with Zoom, it allows us to use, uh, to mirror our cell phone so that you actually see how it works. So uh, with that, we're going to, I think I have to keep clicking this button here. So what is Instagram? It is a mobile platform only. It is owned by, by Facebook. Facebook bought it. You can view people's accounts via a computer, but unlike Facebook, and Twitter where you can actually work on the platform. You can't do that on the computer. It is strictly really meant for a phone. You can trick it into working on your iPad, but you'll have to tilt your head 90 degrees in order to work at it. I can talk, tell you how to do that later. And it's meant for photo sharing, and um, it's a very artistic audience of people who post and people who view it are really looking for they consider themselves curators. They may be looking for just botanical photographs, or maybe they want action shots, or they, maybe just they like, like the, the beach. They want to see beach, and that's what they'll look for. They'll actually go in and search by hashtag for beach, or Delaware, or Maryland. So this is how it works. It's grown since, oh, Tracy and I did this for National Master Gardeners about six months ago, Master yeah. Gardener Coordinators about six months ago. And the total there was five million. It's grown another hundred million in only six months. And six months is ancient history in social media terms. <laughs> I think there is an archive of an older Instagram account. And really it's changed so much from 15 seconds worth of video now to up to a minute. You could only have square when it started. Now you can do portrait and landscape. So six months from now, don't pay attention to this webinar. There may be something else coming up. It changes rapidly. But Michelle, the biggest change, I'm reminding her the little icons there at oh the my bottom. Goodness. The, oh my goodness. <laughs> Instagram started out with this icon here at the um, left, which looks like a, and I'm really dating myself, the Polaroid uh, swing camera. I remember that from the 70s. And it started out, it had a lot of really cool filters to make your brand new photographs look like they came from the 1960s or 70s, light leaks, and so forth. Well, last year, Instagram changed their logo, and it rocked the social media world. People were not happy about that. But And I will say, for a person who doesn't use Instagram very much, I'm telling on myself, I instantly know what the left one is, and I'm still trying to learn the one on the right. <laughs> but something like that really did upset the fans, but it is, as we say in extension, it is what it is. You have yep. to deal with the situation in hand. 
um, it is a very artistic and purposeful content. And so for those of you today, uh, you could be interested in Instagram because maybe you have a family farm. So you could just use it to advocate for agriculture. And Lord knows on social media that's needed. The everyday photograph of your, someone in your family working on the farm, tending animals, you have all these cute pictures of children with animals. That is worth picture worth a thousand words mm -hmm. those kind of photographs are and they're needed to counter the factory farm um, image image mm -hmm. that that is often erroneously assigned to agriculture um, you may have an agribusiness so if you have a creamery a winery a garden center maybe you're renting out your barn or your farm for venues like weddings this is where you want to take pictures explain the different kinds of grapes explain the different kinds of flavors what's the difference in the wine what pairs with something these are teachable moments and there's a soft sell implied with that um, instagram is not used for hard selling it is used people do use it but it doesn't go over really well and then for many for those of you who are in extension we didn't start out on instagram we started out like everybody else with facebook mm -hmm. we moved over into twitter and we, we had to, I wouldn't say argue, but we had to appeal to our institution to allow us to have an Instagram account because there, there's great teachable moments with these, with these images. So this first image, for instance, yesterday, Tracy and her colleagues at UMD were doing what, an Annie's Project? Annie's Project for poultry growers. And um, we were just discussing how this is that kind of stagnant shot of people staring <laughs> at a screen um, but I told Michelle this is a great shot for getting out the fact that avian influenza is you know the low path is in Tennessee now so that could be used in another platform but it's really not a whole lot to look at for Instagram <laughs> this is the kind of photograph that I take and you get excited about them because you see your, prof your professionals in front of a PowerPoint screen and they're a dime a dozen this would not be an image I would put on Instagram I might use it in Facebook to, 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 and tag University of Maryland for helping us join mm -hmm. it. I might tag friends. I can talk about the crowd, the importance of the avian influenza. But I wouldn't, this would security. be an image I wouldn't put on Instagram. Right. Because it's ho-hum as far as a photograph is concerned. Uh, the, the picture down below, our hands holding silage, and this occurred during a farm tour. So you, you, know, you don't get to see silage up close too right. much. So it's kind of a cool photograph for other people. Not So this is the kind of photo that you might run into all the time and you never think of taking a close up of silage. But it, people do find it interesting. So um, and overall on Instagram, you can do up to one minute of video now. And so that is something interesting. It used to be just 15 seconds. The other thing in an extension is we are now implementing um, foreign language hashtags, in particular Spanish, because our, in, particularly in Sussex County, the Spanish bot speaking population is about 15%. Extension agents do know their, their regional demographics, or they should, um, but we looked at the Pew Re Research Internet Center, and this was the statistics uh, for 2015, and it had, they haven't come out with anything new yet, but younger people are using Instagram, and particularly minority audiences are growing on Instagram. They're also using Snapchat, but we're not talking about Snapchat today. So for a teachable moment, this, this is a valuable, valuable platform, and we treat it completely differently than we, than we would treat content that we would post on Twitter and Facebook. Occasionally, I would say 5% of the time, we'll put the same thing out across. But most of the time, we treat this differently. This is a way to reach a completely new group of people that maybe have never heard of you. But as Michelle has on there, strategically, it is us trying to make all reasonable effort to reach those in our states and, um, and counties. And if you see at the bottom, you'll see that actually the urban and suburban population, if you're in a very rural county, rural county that, you know, it's there as well, but it's a way to reach out to others that maybe don't know as much about your topic. So th these are just some screenshots that, that University of Delaware UD Extension uses. This is our handle right here, so we invite you to follow us. And if you're Extension, we'll follow you back. But this is a picture that I took 
while at work of, uh, of a black swallowtail. Um, and again, we've we're, we're only been at this for a year, and I think we have close to maybe 350 followers. So um, we're happy with that. We're growing slowly. But um, we talk about what it is. We're using, uh, as it is, the our institution, University of Delaware, was having a, their own campaign called UD Summer. Well, we're part of University of Delaware, so I availed myself of that hashtag. And I'm incorporating it. There's different ways you can do hashtags now. You can incorporate it into the sentence. Um, so, but I'm using not just butterfly, but I'm using pollinator, garden, nature, summer, because people are searching for those terms. Maybe they're just looking for an image. They don't know anything about you, but they find out about you because they were looking for that image. If you don't use the hashtag, they can't find you. But we're also adding in Spanish hashtags, jardín for garden, mariposa for butterfly. And if you look over to the next slide to the right, you'll see that there are already a half a million tags for Mariposa. So to not use that Spanish language hashtag is foolish, at least for, for, from an extension perspective. We, we are trying to reach out to that audience. Um, the one below here, this is a uh, red twig dogwood. Mm -hmm. Now, the agent who took this up in Newcastle County does not have an Instagram account but she sent it to us, to our social media team, and we put it out there. So we had 32 people like it. NDW302 is me, I liked it. And we, she gave me a caption and it went on and on. We had eight comments about this, particularly with C. Patron. He was asking all about it. That's a dogwood? We were in fact, yes it is. What variety? We looked it up, put that in there. Is it native? Well, no, but it's still, it's this this is one that does very well in the area so you can actually really have a dialogue with someone that never would have been count, talked to you before and that's to me that's what all outreach is all about tracy what's this picture here that is a bee hotel or bee house and that is a very popular subject and um, everyone's very aware of the bee issue and uh, native pollinators and um, as well as just general pollinators and that so we've done a lot of programming around that in all three counties and just had a, our pre-conference session um, on attracting native pollinators um, to your farm which was fantastic so um, it was a way for us to get information out there to others about how to do that and why it's important and as you'll see you have you can actually write quite a bit of text to explain so again you can use this platform to teach about the photograph and at the end of that we put in pollinator bees bee hotel and then casa de abejas and abejas for house of bees and bees so that's the spanish language so we're trying to do that more over on the far right this is just a um a composite photograph at the end of the year they had your best nine it was a big hashtag that was going across Instagram and everybody was putting up their favorite nine photographs from the year so that's just an example of following along some national trends you want to pay attention to what other people are using and hop on that bandwagon because they're following that hashtag in this case best best nine 2016 and we posted that comment that content getting started hashtags do matter so you want to be able to fill out a profile you are only allowed to have one URL so in our case our our extension account it is extension.udell.edu unlike Twitter and unlike Facebook you cannot embed live uh, links in any of your content you have one shot at it and it's on your profile so when people want to find something out we will say go to our profile and more information will be on that website. You can change that up if you're really doing a specific campaign and you want people to go to a specific hashtag, I mean rather a specific website, but for the most part we try to get the most generic, the best one we can. You do want to make sure that your icon, if you're a business, is consistent with your other social media accounts. So for University of Delaware we have Ladybug with the UD logo on the bottom left corner and you will see that whether we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, that's what we use. You want to use your brand, you want to use your logo. You want to follow when you're first getting started, you don't have any followers, so what do you do? How do you get started? 
I would recommend you follow your local accounts. Most of your legislators, whether you're an R or a D or an I, you want to follow your, the, almost all of them now have an Instagram account. Their staff is doing it. Uh, look up your local papers, your local media. You're going to immediately find out what are your state hashtags. They may be different. In Delaware, for instance, we use Delagram, IG Delaware for Instagram Delaware, and then just hashtag Delaware. And the News Journal, which is our paper of record in the state, uses DE365. So they are curating content that has that DE365. And you could, you could use that. They may feature one of your photographs on their online website. So Snow DE is another one. And one time we took a picture, uh, we, this was with Twitter, but I used Snow DE. And the News Journal was curating all the Snow DE hashtags. Well, here's Cooperative Extension showing right up in their curation account with, where tens of thousands of people could see it. So it really will give you increased exposure if you use your hashtags strategically. So that, those are the main tips there. We'll have time for questions, because right now we're on a full screen, so we can't see any. Um, but type your questions in. So attracting new followers. And please, if you can, mute your uh, microphones. Um, start local and make note of the common hashtags. You can also look at who they are following. So you could go onto UD Extension, for instance, and see who UD Extension is following. You will see that we are following some Delaware agencies, some nonprofits, but we're also following other extension accounts across the country. So that might be a good place to start if you're an extension. If you're a winery, you might want to look up the word wine or winery and find out what other wineries are doing and how they're marketing. And so that is how you start with that. And then you want to you want to compliment them. You want to go on to their um, you want to go on to their. Somebody needs to mute. I might have to. Um, Marsha, I think it is Marsha. You need to mute your microphone if you could. Thank you. Um, you um, you want to look at who you're. So anyway, to like your photographs, you want to go on to someone's account. So if Tracy were starting, she might look me up. And she might compliment one of my photographs. And she could just do a thumbs up emoji. But it would be better for me if she said, hey, Michelle, that's a great photo. It puts me in a, in a better algorithm to, to, for my images to, to keep going. It, when, you, when other people comment on your content, it helps your prominence. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so in a lot of social media settings, the commenting is the way to, to bump your your uh, outreach in real estate it's location 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 yeah. any more today success on any social media platform 50 percent of what you're doing on social media should be engaging with other people talking to them making a comment asking them a question that is it's social media gold so i can't stress that enough you also want to use a lot of hashtags oh and this is the big thing a lot of people I know personally have Instagram accounts, but they keep them private. Mm -hmm. Teenagers are big. I'm, I'm very frustrated right now in that a lot of 4-Hers, I work with a lot of 4-H kids, they're all on Instagram. And when I go to follow them as Delaware 4-H and follow them back, their things are private. Now, I understand that as a parent, I would be wanting my kids sharing things out to strangers. However, when that child is doing something terrific like a community service project or they're learning STEM, that can't be, that can't be shared, that can't be seen by anybody. Um, so when you're advocating, uh, if you want to develop your own personal brand better, I'm telling this to, to 4-H teens, you can open up a second account. So you can have a private one that shows your living room and, and your personal. But when you are out doing a great community service project, if I were a parent, I would want that I would want people to see that. I would want to inspire other people. So keeping your your accounts private is not going to help advocate. It's not going to help sell. It's not going to help tell a story. 
So you want to consider, and that's one big change that Instagram did, and I'll show you, it's very easy. You can have multiple accounts. You just need a different email. So you create a Gmail account. I could have five or six of them if I wanted to. So, and they're very easy now to switch back and forth. So really consider having a public account um, so that you can tell the things you want to tell, tell those stories easily. Um, post quality photographs and try not to um, sell too hard. I recently took a, uh, for those of you who may be familiar with uh, Dogfish Head Beer, they recently, Mariah Calgioni um, spoke at a Delaware social media uh, conference, and they don't sell hard. They just show the, they show the behind the scenes of their brewery. They will show the different bottles and the artwork, but they're not trying to buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. It's, it's, it's a much softer. They're more about telling the story than the sales just But come. it draws people and in. And it draws people <laughs> in. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, having said that, there are people who do, do sell. And I usually just skim right through those. I don't want to be uh, bothered with them. You also want to write a good profile, and you want to tag your friends and partners when you're working with them. So here's an example of some screenshots. Now, this is uh, Jenny Rhodes, who's, this is her personal account, but she works with Tracy at the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. But she posted this picture of, of a big gathering at, um, for an agronomy session. Now, I would have talked to her and said, you know, you could do a lot more hashtags than just agronomy, mm -hmm. agriculture, um, crops, it, depending on what the topic was. But I went on, I just wanted to show you what it is. You can go on there and say, what a great turnout you had. So the 4-H, actually, they're just using a 4-H building here. It wasn't a 4-H meeting. But that's our, our person there, Mark Van Gessel. So I could go back and even add some more comments if I wanted to. But that's the kind of interaction that you want to do. She had just posted this. Mid-Atlantic Women in Agriculture is a fairly new account on Instagram. They asked me to help out during their recent um, conference mm -hmm. in February. So they added me on. So this is an example here, which you're looking at, are the accounts that I have access to. And it's a matter of just going, you click on the account that you're on, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute live, but you click on the arrow, the carrot, and everything will open up. So here is my personal account. I also post on behalf of Delaware 4-H. I post on behalf of UD Extension, and now I'm doing a little help once in a while with Mid-Atlantic Women in Act. I can keep adding accounts. I could, this, this could just scroll down if I wanted to. Um, this is an example of a Women in Ag post. This is their um, profile here. So it says Women in Ag up here at the top. It got cut off. But educating, engaging, empowering women in agriculture through webinars, farm tours, any project classes, and annual conference. So that's their profile. And then there's their website, and that's hyperlinked. And what you're seeing here is prior to that, they were just doing screenshots of what they were posting on Instagram and Twitter. And if I'm going to see it on Twitter and I'm going to see it on Instagram, I don't want to, I mean, on Facebook, I don't want to see it on Instagram too. I'm going to unfollow one of them if I'm seeing the same thing all the right. time across all three. So here's where I jumped in and I'm starting to take pictures of people doing things that are sponsored by the Women of Ag. And we did oh, it. Yeah, there's our bee workshop. And, yeah, there's, there's your bee <laughs> workshop. Um, so people do look at the whole, um, the whole, profile, what, the, what they would call your, um, oh, there's a word for it, and it's escaping me at the moment. But it's a quick glance. Of it's a quick glance. About. It gives you a snapshot. And people do look at this, and if they just see ads, they're going to tune you out. You just don't want to do that. Um, here's UD, University of Delaware Extension. So this is our, our tagline, Extending Knowledge and Changing Lives, via, and I've also it's not hyperlinked, but Delaware 4-H is part of extension, agriculture, family, consumer, blah, 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 blah. You get the point. We use this as a, as a curative hashtag. We're part of UD Canner, so I make sure that I'm mentioning them too because we're part of that college. And then this is what's hyperlinked is our main website. And we have 145 posts in the course of one year, 303 followers. We're following 365. That's not bad for one year. I mean, we, we maybe post once a week on here, 
sometimes more, sometimes less. But you will get notifications like this. So here's our logo with the ladybug. Uh, right now, I, this tells me I have two comments waiting my attention that five people, I've got new hearts, and when you like a photograph, you tap it, and a heart will come up, and somebody has tagged me, so I have a number one, I have a tag. And so this is a snapshot of our, I would say, our portfolio, and you get an idea of, the, of what we're doing here. Occasionally, we will do a push for a, um, an session. event, a session, or a workshop. But we don't do a whole lot of that, only because there's really no live link to go with it. It's more about human beings and people. We can do a collage. And now Instagram allows you to upload more than one. And you'll see a little uh, white box. And that just means you click on it. It's like a little mini slideshow. So that's something new from the yeah, last time, Tracy, yeah, that we, we did have it. That. That's cool. So um, this is just what it looks like. Here's, if you want to really go big time, this is Nat Geo, NASA is another one, International Space Station. These are people who are doing Instagram really well. Of course, when you've got $20,000 worth of photographic equipment, a professional, you can get images like this. But they use, you can see their followers, just for this photo, but they use, you can, I don't know what the character limit is off the top of my head. You can write a couple paragraphs. Well, it didn't used to be that big. No. You can actually talk about this. But they're not geo, and they can do that. We would probably tune somebody out if we right. went this long. Right. But then what they do is they pretty much uh, notice that they credit the photographer. They might credit an organization. But then at the bottom, what they do is tag their account. So using the at sign is tagging an account. And then they're using um, hashtags at the bottom. The new trend is to not do any hashtags at all in your first paragraph, but add the hashtags in as a comment later, a second comment that will still attach to your photograph. So I'm starting to experiment with that. Um, so this is my particular uh, feed here. So I have pictures. I'm all over the place. I don't have any one theme. I take pictures of whatever and interests me. There's a cute me. little grandson. A bottle there. of wine up there. <laughs> I have some photographs, some video. My grandson when he was two, things at the beach. Here's Dogfish Head. So pay attention here. They're, they're branding, but it's subtle. It, there's no words that say, come to our store, 50 cents off a six pack. They're not doing that. This is the little box. It tells you that there's more than one picture there. You can click on it. Here's Sam, the owner. Mm -hmm. Mariah says that what she'll do is she'll be walking walking through the brewery, and she'll just, like, ambush him. Tracy knows all about being ambushed. Yeah, she ambushes me when I'm in the garden. <laughs> she just, like, you know, gets him at it behind his desk and says, hey, say something. And so it's it's off-centered is their, is their tagline. Um, they will show it with food, but they show just ordinary it's authentic, and every once in a while, it's just a subtle branding, but it's not this hard right. sell. They're, they're trying to be part of the community. You can really try and develop a brand look. So this one, I think, is for a, a water um, bottling, what, but just look. You can see the whole look. So some people pay a lot of attention to the overall look of their, of their uh, uh, thumbnails. So this is very soft, very pastel, and this is also just something that if you're in marketing, you may want to consider doing. Customer curation. Give your customers a hashtag. So if I owned a liquor store, I would, I would have a hashtag that I could curate and ask people to say, hey, I want to see what you, you've just bought this bottle of wine from me, or I'm a winery, you've just bought this bottle of wine, when you get home, take a picture and show me what you've yeah. you served with it and, and take a picture of it. Businesses print these out. You could have a wall and a cork board in the back. You could print them out, put them up there. People come back into your store and they go, oh, they point up and go, oh, that's my, that's my picture. They used it. You could, you could have incentives. Um, you could show all your different flavors and children enjoying ice cream cones, um, so you could use electronics and uh, articles, um, pro programs like Storify, Tagboard, there's a whole mess of them that you enter in the, the hashtag and then everybody who's using that hashtag um, 
comes up. So you can curate if you're having an event or if you just want to show other customers, look what our other customers are doing with our product. So you can develop your own hashtag. And that might be something you just print out, stick in a bag, or you have something posted. And it'll take a while to catch on, but then once they do, you can, um, that's earned endorsements right there. Right, and, and if anything, the word I would say is you're developing your own little community. Yes. And people love to Absolutely. be a part of something. Absolutely. So. Here uh, is another thing that's very popular is you can go online and, and look for social media picture frame and there's tons of uh, printers that will do this. So you could have something like this at your place of business. We had this called True Leaders for 4-H and our governor, our brand new governor, Governor Carney. It's a great sport, posed in it. So people just, and you, you've all seen these, I'm sure. So you could have one for your business. We did one at our annual conference at Extension, um, trying to get that out again, and people then share that on their own timeline, but then they're sharing your institution's hashtag. So these are just some fun ways to get people involved uh, with using the hashtag. Some other content suggestions, um, you can look at all these. Shout out your volunteers, a calendar garden how-to. So we're, we're talking about that. So we're gonna we're gonna we're, Tracy just gave me a the hand under the chin. We Time gotta, to get to we, the we phone. Gotta, so we, <laughs> you can look at this. Um, this is another example, really quickly. So if you're gonna post a picture of a sunflower, and that might be what I say, Happy August has summer flown by for you. But then I'm gonna add sunflower garden August yellow summer flower gardening petals delagram. I'm gonna add all those in either at the bottom of my original post or I'll put them as the trend is now starting to turn, putting them into a comment. And I'll jump in and say that if you don't think hashtags matter, they do. We have a, um, an outreach educational program puppet show <laughs> for designed for kids. And um, it's the misadventures of Peter Rabbit and Farmer McGregor's uh, garden. And Michelle has done a fabulous job of of providing that outreach. In fact, if you Google Far Farmer McGregor or Peter Rabbit, our volunteer who plays Farmer McGregor <laughs> is like the eighth one that comes up in all of Peter Rabbit. So I was like shocked. And I was yeah. like, wow, Michelle is really doing a great job. <laughs> it, it's all about labeling and tagging. So it's, it's just, yeah, you just never know how someone's going to find you. I did want to, when we, when we presented this with the National Master Gardener coordinators, they asked about metrics. So you really, your metrics on Instagram are right there. It tells you how many people liked it, how many people viewed it. But you can uh, do that through Hootsuite, if you're familiar with Hootsuite. You can use a Kana Square. Oops, it's not free. Uh, they'll let you do it for a little bit, and then they make you. Uh, but it's going to tell you who are your top likers, who, uh, when's, what's the most popular time to post. And that's so, important, too, yeah, depending on your audience. Absolutely. You need to pay attention to that. Monday, it's for me personally, this is my, I did, I did ran this test, it says Monday at 7 o'clock is when I get the most engagement. Well, who would have thought? But um, it's going to be different for everybody because you're, you're, remember now, you're targeting, each of you will target your own audience for a specific purpose. So, um, but these analytics are very, very helpful. Uh, so some takeaways, uh, I think we've already talked about this, 60 seconds, let's, um, let's so engage, 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 um, and don't treat Instagram the same as Facebook or Twitter. The one thing you don't want to do is, and we'll go live and I'll show you this, so here's some contact information. So what we're going to do now is stop the share a second, and I'm going to reshare, and we're going to share my phone. And let's just take a look at some questions to see if there's any questions that have come up. Chat. Any questions so far before we go live? Have you tried having your link go to Instagram page or your website where there is more information about info? You can embed on your website. There are lots of ways to, of putting in your Instagram feed. Um, if you like WordPress, for instance, it's very, uh, very good to know. We're going to come back to this because I do want it. Yes, it's the same for iPhone and Android. Where can we view the slides? They're going to be on the website right up top here. Uh, and about an hour was as soon as this video loads. So let me show you.
we're on Zoom. This is the nice thing about Zoom. So I'm going to turn my phone on. And for those of you in extension, um, one of the reasons I'm here with Michelle is because um, as an extension agent, we're everywhere and we're spread so thin um, that I just told her, Michelle, I don't have time to do all this and do everything else that I need to get done in the day. So, you know, we're only three counties here in Delaware, <laughs> but we've been able to solve the problem of outreach. We all have a um, email address that we're going to send photos to, and then our communications people like Michelle will decide where that best fits. They may not use all of them, but they can't be at every uh, session or outreach that we do, but it helps us spread the word of the different kind of programming that we do. And the same could be true for your farm. Yeah. Or maybe we, you know, other We, we created a social media portal, and um, which is udsocial at gmail.com. And all of the agents send their cell, cell phone photos to that. Sometimes Tracy will directly text me and send some right here. Yeah. Or we'll, I will um, airdrop it. So, but this is a way she can send me something and then I can figure out the best place to put it. And oftentimes it's on Instagram. So this is my cell phone here. That's my grandson in the background. And you can see the Instagram account is right here. And so this brings us up to, to Women in Ag's account right now, which is, which is a young account. So please follow us. We would appreciate that. And um, so what you would do if you were brand new to Instagram is you would come in here and one of the popular accounts, say for this account, so down at the bottom you have your home account, so that's, that's who you are. This is who I'm following, this would be the latest. So this is who um, Women in Ag is following right now. And if I like this photograph from Farmall 86, I would just tap on it and a heart appears, and that will let that person know that 59 now, 59 people like that. I could then tap on the quote, and I could make a comment. And I don't really have anything to say right now about this particular photograph, so I'm going to back that out, but I wanted you to see that. You could also, you have a search button. That's the second one from the bottom. I'm going to tap on that. Magnifier. And this is where you're going to search. This is how you're going to first get started. And I might come up here and I just might use the hashtag farm her. Because that's a big one that women in ag across, across the nation are using. And there's 37, almost 38,000 people who have used this hashtag. So you can click on that, and you can see what the top ones are. Well, that right there, the one holding the eggs to me, just jumped right out at me, so I could look at that. And that's Happy Days Farm, 971 likes. Um, I could tap on that and say, whoops, I lost that part. The point is, you could have made a comment about that farm her search and click on that and if I wanted to make a comment now on that as women in agriculture I would tap on the quote and I would say what a terrific picture There you go. Now, she's going to notice that because people notice comments more than likes, and they may go, oh, I wonder who Mid-Atlantic Wea is, and she'll click on us, and she may follow us. She'll say, hey, thank you, and so we've started a relationship with that particular farm. The other thing you'll want to do is let's switch over now, and so now I want to show you how you switch accounts and how easy this is to do. So you'll see women at Ag at first, they were doing a lot of signs. Uh, and some people will do that, but you're, you're going to get more resonation if, you, if you're using, you know, pictures of people, pictures like, pictures like yeah, that. Like, like Darth Vader. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on the bottom left, which is the Women in Eggs location. And 
right? It brings me up to the very top to their profile. They've made 33 posts. They have 83 followers. They're following 101 people. I want to show you what UD Extension is doing. So I'm going to click on the carrot that's pointing down right next to the word WIA. And the, these are all the accounts that I manage on my phone. So I'm going to go to UD Extension. And then you will see all of our posts. So here they are. This was our annual conference. We were having a social media. You can see there I am holding somebody took a picture of me. So we use these photographs. A lot of these images that you're seeing every once in a while, such as this one, we do try to promote a program, especially if we're, if we're not getting a lot of registration. We will put that out there, but that's not what, that's not what this is about. Um, the photographs here, most of these were sent to me by an agent. Um, this is our FCS agent at an outreach location. Another agent sent us their new garden sign mm -hmm. for their teachable garden. So you can see the hashtags I used. Um, and let me show you here some mushrooms. Somebody went on a tour and that one's not coming up for some reason. All right. So what I wanted to show you was something that Tracy sent me. And Tracy was one of my early oh, adopters. There we are. There we are. So Tracy was doing, well, tell them what the event was. Um, we do um, school garden tours for English as second language students here locally. And um, we do, they're usually second grade. And oh. we have eight stations that they go to and learn about different topics. Um, so I thought it was really cool that with my phone, the kids are making compost. And we talked about, you know, breaking things into small pieces. What are the parts that you have to and, have? And this was back yeah. when we only had 15 seconds on Instagram. And I just want to tap the sound so you can hear it. Oop, it's very touchy. So that's Tracy asking, what, what are you making compost? And so it just continues to loop. I often will ambush Tracy. I, when I see her out in the garden, I will um, find her. And like one day she didn't want to be on camera. It was a bit, we all have bad hair days. So um, I said, it's okay. You don't have to be on camera. We can do it this way. So this is another 15 second little bit little teachable moment yeah take note of my pointer i think that's a minority <laughs> and it'll it'll just keep it'll just keep looping um so these are the type of contents um that we're putting on there occasionally March this was last year March 17th they were planting peas now when you are posting on Instagram here's the nice thing about Instagram back in the day I wasn't um, when I first did that I was not using Spanish um, I went back in later you can tap on a photo you hit the three little dots up at the top and you can edit and you can go back in and add hashtags you forgot about or you've learned henceforth or, or later. Um, so I did go back in and put in peas, you know, pisantes and granja for farm. And I put that in there just to see if I would pick, maybe pick up a few more. And so you might. So, you know, I, I learn as I go. Um, so that's one thing you can do. You can also repurpose. Um, so I could take this image here that's already been posted last year, and I could reshare it. And when you're originally posting or whether you're resharing, you will have the option of sending this picture out across Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Flickr. You have to connect your accounts, and these are connected. But I normally don't do that. I might occasionally share an Instagram to my Facebook page just to let people know on Facebook, oh, I have an Instagram account. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I will do it to Twitter 
But what I won't do is go boom, boom, oops, and that, that just did it, so I'm going to stop it. Um, boy, that was touchy. If I do it to Twitter, here's what happens with Twitter. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to reshare that to Twitter. All right, now it's gone out. So first of all, it's a year old, so I really don't want to share it to Twitter. But I want to show you what happens. There's the post. If you'll notice, there's no image. Yeah, kind of boring, isn't it? <laughs> um, if you're going to put an image on Twitter, put the image on Twitter. Don't send it to Twitter via Instagram because all they're going to see is a link. What I'd want to see instead would be something like that, where the picture is in the feed itself and grabbing the attention. And so that's why you don't want to be automatically sharing out occasionally. Uh, you can do it occasionally, but don't do it as a regular practice. It's, it's a big social media no-no. It's a time saver, but it's, it's strategically, it's not going to help you gain any followers because I, I know one person who does this regularly. And I see the same thing, exact same wording, exact same timing. Go at, if you're going to do that, if this picture of a refrigerator was ours and we were talking about food safety, I would, and I love the picture, and I wanted everybody to see it. Fine, I'll put it on Twitter, you know, Friday night at 5 o'clock. I might wait until Saturday at 2 to put it on Facebook, and I may wait a whole week to put it on Instagram. I'm going to stagger it. I'm going to set it up differently. I'm going to treat the audiences differently because they are different. So that's the main thing um, that, that, that you need to know about with um, uh, Instagram. So I'm going to actually go into my um, Twitter account here and just delete that because it's old. Okay. So most of our Twitter feeds have an organic picture upload. That's so when you are on Instagram, so if I were to go into Instagram now and I were to upload a photograph of Tracy. I see Tracy had her um, Annie's project yesterday. So I'm going to now hit the plus sign. And this is going to bring me into images that I have on my camera. And sure enough, there's an image of Tracy. Oh, we were doing a color uh, personality doing, test. Doing a color personality test for Annie's project. So I I can say, well, you know what? I don't want that to be square. If you notice, it defaulted to square. What I'm doing is pinching with my two fingers. I can put the full landscape then in, so I can I can make it square. I can crop it to just just be Tracy and get rid of Jennifer Rhodes <laughs> if I wanted to. I could bring it in and include Jennifer in. That's fine. I like that. I'm going to go next. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. You have all these cool little yeah, filters. make me look good, Michelle. They have all these little filters <laughs> here. This does not do Photoshop. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> but um, you can apply the filter uh, with a certain percentage. You can put a frame on it, which in case this is white, and white on white doesn't, doesn't even look like you have a filter. I don't want that. But you can go through here and use any of these kind of filters to give you an effect. And if you pick on one, here's one called slumber. That might be fitting for us. We're so tired, right? <laughs> no, still, it's, you know, you could just kind of play around with that. Cancel. I don't want to do that. But that would help you if you had a certain look that you were trying to obtain, right? Absolutely. You also have up at the mid top middle, you'll see a, a half dark, half light sunshine. You can click on that, and that's going to give you the lux. It's going to give you a brightness and darkness. Cancel. There's another one. There should be one for discard. Next. Next. There should be an edit on here. Oh, edit. There we go. So you click edit, and now you can get into um, increasing the saturation. I actually tend to decrease a little bit. I like that. Hit done. I might want to fade, put a vignette around them. You can see wow. that. 
I can brighten it up if it's too dark. I can brighten up. Not a great photograph as far as art quality. And this would be the kind of photograph I wouldn't normally put on Instagram. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it so you see. So done. So I'm next. I'm finished with that. So now I'm going to write the caption. And I can type this in. So I'm just going to say, um, uh, say we're working. And I could dictate this and maybe I'll just dictate it. Working with our partners at University of Maryland, discussing color personality, color personality for Annie's project. Okay, so I'll go back here and take a look at University of Maryland. I'm just going to back that all out because I know they have an account. So I'm going to tag them. U O U M D. Helps to know how to type. U M D. There it is. College of Ag and Natural Resources. I'm going to mm -hmm. click that, and I'm going to make project for I'm Annie's. The Andy's project. I did. Oh, I did Andy? <laughs> Andy? Andy? Now Annie wouldn't be happy with that. So we'll fix that. <laughs> All right. That's the problem with working with uh, capital P. Check. <laughs> and. Annie's. Now, if Annie's had a hashtag, I'd use that. I don't know if it does or not. Annie's. All right, we want to get rid of that S. And that S. Oh, we want to go back. All right. All right, so there's Annie's project. So now I'm finished. I'm going to do something new. This is different. I'm going to hit OK. I could say where I'm going to be, and actually this did happen at the Carville Research and Education Center. That's where that happened. So I'm going to leave that. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to share this to Twitter, Facebook? No, 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 I don't. I'm just going to hit share. And that picture is now posted. I want to go back in now and add the hashtags. So I'm going to make a comment to myself, and I'm going to add hashtag. And they're not case sensitive. I like to put them in that way. I use cooperative extension. That's the hashtag for cooperative extension. Post. Oops. I should have gone in there with more. Okay, so you have to put them all on at once. So this is a this is a new conventional wisdom now with, with Instagram. So I want to do um, Agriculture. This happened at the University of Delaware, so I'm going to put U D E L. That's what they use. Um, I might want to tag Jennifer Rhodes because she's in it. So I might tag her. Should be Jen. No, it's she's in here, but I can't pass. She's not popping up. But you get the idea. I would tap tap on that person. I'm not gonna tag Jennifer Gray, but you would get the idea. It they would pop up and you would you would tag them. She was. It was there? Mm -hmm. Okay, she tag me. There it is, there Rhodes is. Jenny. That's why it wasn't coming up, Rhodes Jenny. So I've tagged her. She'll get a notification now, a little virtual tap on the shoulder, telling her that um, we've mentioned her. Um, I might put anything that would be relative if Annie's project had a, let's just see if it does. It's going to tell you. There's been 51 posts on Annie's project, yep. so why not? Why not add to it? And so you could go on and on and on. There's no limit here to how many you want to post. I could post Delaware, um, anything else. So that's 
how that works and I would post that and then that's all those tags are connected to that one image that will help it spread its message across. The other thing you'll want to do again is when you're when you're looking no matter what state you're in you may want to come in here and type in like Kansas we have somebody from UNL um, you would type in Kansas and you can look for people that would have that. Here's Kansas State University, Kansas 99, um, University of Kansas. Which one's the extension one? I forget. Um, let's just click on that one. They've got 40, and they're following 154. I might want to look at them if I'm in Kansas and say, oh, okay, Kansas history, sure. Um, and look at some of these accounts and tap on them and decide whether or not I want to follow them. So that's how you do it. You kind of look at people's accounts. This one doesn't have any yet. Um, here's an example of why it's frustrating to have private accounts. Here's Delaware 4-H's account. We have 696 followers. A lot of them are youth. And if I click on them and tap one of them, I'll watch it won't work, but let me try one. She's not. She's private. I mean, she's public. There. That's what you get. This account is private. So this is what a lot of people do. And it's great if you want to keep your, but if, you, if you're coming to this webinar to learn how to advocate, how to, how to use outreach, this is not what you want to do. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is if you are using photographs of customers and they are children, you must get a photo release for anyone who is a minor. You can download these off the web. I can, I'll post the ones that University of Delaware uses. Um, you do want to, are we recording? Um, we do want to um, make sure that we get permission because you could ask a parent, oh, is it okay if I take your picture? Oh, sure. You mind if it goes up on social media? Oh, certainly. You put it up on social media. I didn't give you permission. It becomes a he said, she said. We get any anyone who is under 18 years of age has to sign a model release. Absolutely. If you don't have a model release handy, voice record their permission. But get permission and make sure that they understand that it's going out on social media. And with that, we're running out of time. I'm going to stop the share. And I'm going to come back to, um, we'll put our video on and we'll look at the chat and we'll open this up with any questions you might have. Is the heart the only like button? Yes. That and commenting. Um, that's the best way to, the best way for you to get followers is to comment on their content and be, and be genuine about it. We're going to work for them. How do you use an iPad with Instagram? What you need to do is you download, say you've downloaded it on your phone. Then you go to your iPad. Let me see if I can show you real quick. I'm gonna. I see that um, the 4-Hers have to sign a photo release. Yes, ours do too. Even our other vol all volunteers, as part of their introduction into our system, they do provide us with a photo release. So there's no question there, and we don't have to go back to them. Real quick, I'm going to show you what you do with an iPad, and this is this is going to be true of any. A lot of um, photo apps are out there. They're fantastic. I'm I am older. I like a bigger platform. I like working with the iPad. So, but the, the apps were made for the iPhone. So how do you get them on your iPad? So what you do, let me share my screen. I have to turn my iPad on. All right, we're gonna play Mary, let's go. Okay, so now you're looking at my iPad. And what you wanna do is go to your app store And go to purchased, even if they're free, you've purchased them. And so Instagram would be would be in here, but it wouldn't be. So then I would click on I see where it says iPad apps at the top left. You right, want right. to top right, excuse me. You want to go for iPhone apps. There is where you're gonna find your Instagram. 
that you've already downloaded on your phone. Um, then you download it. And as you'll see, most of the time in Instagram, it it's going to, that's, it, you saw it shift there and then it righted itself. Well, the, my iMac righted itself. It doesn't write itself on my, I actually have to turn my iPad to a, to a vertical orientation in order to see it the way you're seeing it right now. It, it's geared and it's meant for a phone. So other than that little glitch, this works beautifully with an iPad. Some apps uh, don't work well at all. Um, they'll work 75% of the time with because they're designed for phones. So, but that's how you get around the um, sharing of the, the Instagram iPhone app on, a, on an iPad. So I'm gonna stop share, let's go back to questions. What is the symbol on the right side under photos do? Can you explain? I'm not sure what we were looking at. In Instagram. In Instagram, under photos, there's a home button. Uh, if we go back to the, there's a home button. Let's see here, slides. Let me share the screen again. And we don't know, just this one. Yeah, this one. Okay. Where did our Instagram go? Where did our program go? Here we go. All right, that's not, technology is not working, everybody. So um, I'm not sure what you meant by that. Send us an email. Yeah, send us an email. <laughs> and I'll be glad to help you out with that. Oh, yeah, there's a heart. Um, there is a little house, which that's your home button. That's going to give you your news feed. That's, so that works like Facebook's news feed. Then there's a magnifying glass, and that's how you search. And you can search people. You can search topics, places, and you can search by hashtags. Okay, go back because I also see the flag looking one. Let's see. Then there's a box with a square on it, and that's where you can either take a picture, take a video, or upload. Okay. And then we have the heart, which the heart will tell you how many hearts you've how had. How many likes. Right? And how many, right. likes, and how many likes you've had. Mm -hmm. That's a save for later. Yeah. Possibly. Okay. Oh, the bookmark. Yes, yes. Thank you. That is a bookmark, and you can save that as a, as the flag looking one. That's when you're actually posting a photo. I don't use that that much, so that's why it didn't. Yeah, that's bookmark, and that's saving it for later. It's something that I might want to go back. The other thing I didn't talk about because I don't use it is with Insta with uh, Instagram. You can do live streaming. Um, it's called Stories. It works a lot like um, Snapchat. I just don't use it, so I didn't feel really qualified to talk about that today. I, I use Periscope and um, Facebook Live for live streaming. And I will say that's really nice. At our last Women in Ag conference in February, I had a participant, we were at the pre-conference, which is a half-day session, um, had a participant come to me the next day and say that something came up um, health-wise with a family member and they couldn't attend our pre-conference session and knew that we had announced we were going to go live prior to the session and they actually were able to participate by um, going on to Facebook and, and watching, you know, what we were doing. So that was a way that we were able to reach other people. And Sonia asked, why is it better to put the, um, the hashtags in the comment section? It's not that it's better, it's more aesthetic. It separates that clutter of hashtags. That's what I'm being told. That's what people are starting to do. I've tried it. I've not seen it hurt my um, my my. Outreach. outreach or my feedback it, it makes it a little cleaner looking so we have a couple more questions here mm -hmm. let's see oh you save for later that's just yeah. the save for later thing so uh, we've talked about can you speak to having a business profile via a personal one and recommendations well I don't everything I've done is for nonprofits um, I occasionally with the um, operating the um, I think if you're going to promote um, a business account will have, I wish I could show you, if I could show you an image, 
an um, a business account is going to let you do more connections to your website. It's going to give you some more features. We're nonprofit UD Extension, so we're keeping it. We're not we're not selling a product. We're right. selling our trust. We're selling our outreach, our information. We're not making money off of it. So that's definitely something for money making. And there's tons of articles on that. Um, I think it will give you this option. So I'm going to share my phone again real quick. And where I see that a lot is on my personal feed. So I'm going to go there for a minute. And I'm going to go home. And I will get like clothing stores trying to pitch to me. Um, Let's see if I can find one. Of course, when I want to find one. So here's one. So this is a sponsored ad for um, med medicinal, looks like medicinal herbs. And see where there's a blue bar at the bottom that says sign up. I think that's the kind of thing. I don't know how to do that with, with the regular accounts that I have. So I think that's a feature that comes with a bit more, a, of a, business more with a business. And then, of course, they're paying for this just like uh, you would do for Facebook to make sure it gets out to people. So um, that is, but a lot of businesses, nurseries and things, garden centers that I deal with aren't doing that. Um, so I think that's the major difference between um, a business account. So there's USU extension, that would be what, University of, what's that? Utah, okay. So, so they're doing videos. So there's a one minute video, which is really nice. So th this is just a great way. People really react to, to videos and things like that. All right, I'm gonna get off again and see if there's any more questions. Do you have to click on the blue follow even if you have allowed Facebook to be connected? Um, not sure exactly what you mean by that. When is that when you're transferring photos? If I'm going to transfer, if I have a photograph of of mine that I want to share on my Facebook page, um, let's see here. I could. I have I have to I have to click on the Facebook and then hit enter to make it to make it go to Facebook. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, they're completely they're completely different. Right. The and again, I I would recommend to anybody not to. It's good once in a blue moon, maybe once a month, you can post something on Instagram and send it to your Facebook account or send it to Twitter, and that's only to let those people know on that account that, hey, you've, you've got an account over here. Hey, I'm on Instagram too, check me out. But if they check you out and they find the exact same content, they're not gonna stay, they're gonna leave. So you have to understand that with, with Cooperative Extension, what we do is we use Twitter to work with reporters, government, other agencies, moms are on Twitter, Facebook is everybody. We pay to go on Facebook. We will pay to promote face to go on Facebook. Five, ten dollars maybe for a certain event. Facebook is going to be the grandmoms, the, but the kids aren't on Facebook anymore. At least they're not saying that they are. So now if we want to go with a younger, diverse group, we want to go right. on Instagram. So that's that's our rationale. So we have we look at these those three platforms completely differently. There's commonalities, yes, and there can be a little bit of overlap, but the worst thing you can do is to just go on Hootsuite, type it once, put it all in, and send it to all three at the same time. It's That's social media suicide is what they say. Um, it just shouldn't be done. It, and the reason people do it, they think, well, that's just a time saver. But it's not going to give you the impact um, that you want to get out of your social media account. You need to tailor your messages to your audience. And you have to know who those audiences yeah. are and go after them. And, Michelle, if you were a business, you could do some kind of promotional 
um, campaign with your customers to find out where they are on social media possibly just so you know Absolutely. how to get to your customers and the very best thing you can do is get your customers to be talking about you and right. tagging you and using the hashtags you set up earned media is is invaluable it's free so if you can get customers and maybe you pick one person who uses that you develop a hashtag so if i owned a winery and i would say white walford's winery so i have a hashtag called walford's winery with every bottle i sell i put a piece of paper in the bag and i'll pick one person a month you come and you use that and i curate it you can come back and get a half price bottle or something like that or a free ice cream cone whatever that would be but i would want other people talking about what I do that's that's the the um, the holy grail in social media it's earned income so I mean earned earned media so when you've when you've got people talking about what you do or tagging you I would love to have a farmer sitting in one of our workshops typing this was a great workshop at UD extension so we need to put that on our brochures so that when they're sitting there <laughs> yeah. and, and looking at our flyers, they know what our hashtag is. We want them to tag us. We want them to say, I sure learned a lot at this Master Gardener workshop. Boom. And they've tagged us and they've used our hashtag. Well, that's, that's better than we could do because that's a testimonial from somebody. So having, having a uh, hashtag for your either a, by event or by program, uh, making sure that your social media accounts are are on materials that are going to the public so that because we have events now we see parents i don't have to worry about a photo release if tracy's an eight-year-old and and her mom is taking <laughs> the picture of the child and the mom tags delaware 4-h in it i don't have to worry that mom has put that out there right. and then i can share that um that's that's gold that's, that's fair gold. game that's Once fair game put it because the mom right. has done it but i can't go and take that picture of that child and put it out there and I, we could be sued so but if we could get that parent to use our event hashtag then i can curate that using um uh, there's several storify is a big one um tag boards and other and we've done that um, Ag Day at the University of Delaware has an Ag Day every April and there's parents galore and they're all out there and they're all posting it on social media and Twitter and Facebook and why not collect that? Why not collect that and celebrate that? So that's that's the curation part and you need to have a hashtag and you need to make sure people know what that is. Okay. So with that, we're going over time. So uh, we're going to stop recording, but we can hang out here. And so thank you, everybody. Thank you yes. for joining us. And um, we're still here if you have some questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, the reach for Tina, Facebook. Here's the thing with Facebook, um, if you're still on. Facebook is, um, we have 1,300 followers on Facebook for extension. and so you would think that when we say we're going to have a free workshop next Friday, that those 1,300 people would see that post. But they don't. They don't. <laughs> Facebook is filtering it out. Facebook is, we'll be lucky if we get 50 people out of that 1,300 seeing it. It either has to be super, super engaging content. I mean, how, how great can you make a workshop sound? Um, you can get or with that that's what they call organic reach if it's funny that's why videos of laughing babies mm -hmm. or cats or because people think it's cute and then they share it um i'm going to unmute everybody in case you have questions you want to ask um so what we do is we pay we if it's an important event we will pay five dollars or ten dollars and ask that our that, that assures that those 1,300 people see that workshop, or we do it by zip code, or yeah, we I was do it by say region. The, the, for some of ours in horticulture, depending on what the outreach is, the type of programming, we can literally be selective in who we try to reach Absolutely. and where. How wide a scope do we want to cast, and and as far as attracting people, depending on location, things like that. But that has given us the best bang 
for our buck, so to speak, on Facebook by, you know, spending that five dollars sure. to get the word out there. They have an open house every July. I think what do you pay to go to the local paper? Three hundred dollars for a Yeah, two different, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's three or four hundred dollars to run a print ad. But for twenty dollars we can reach five thousand people on Facebook within a specific zip code. So we've done that and we get a lot of reaction to the to that particular workshop. We also get some new people that never heard of us before exactly. they go, oh, proper extension, oh yeah. So yeah, Facebook is, uh, and Facebook, we'll probably start doing that with Instagram as well. So. Yeah, that's, that's a guy. Once in a while do it and Personally, if I had a, a really adorable picture of a lamb being with a tom, I would, I would post that, and I've done that. I've, I have pictures that are just worth a million bucks, and with a great message to it. I will post it on all three. I just don't do it automatically. I post it manually. Because you want that feed to show up in Twitter. You want the um, you want the photo to show up in the feed. You don't want to see a blue link. I mean, any baby animal photo oh, yeah. tends to get hundreds of likes. Oh, oh. And things. So yeah, those are always the the winners, so to speak. <laughs> Anything else from anyone? We're still here. If we have any other questions, thank you so much. Um, Thanks for joining in and let us know um, if you have any other questions. We'd be happy to try to answer those. Just shoot us an email, and that'll be on the the, um, the post and the recording. Thank you for watching our archived presentation of our Wednesday webinar. If you would like to see more archived Wednesday webinars, please visit our YouTube channel. Or to find a schedule of upcoming live webinars, visit our website.